Okay, so let's keep your basic math skills sharp by putting them to work to solve this lovely math word problem right here. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. Uh, it is the following. Cars start going into a 500 space parking lot. One car every 15 seconds. How long until this parking lot is full? All right, feel free to use a calculator. And if you have the answer, put that into the comment section. But I want you to take one step further here, okay? Because a lot of you are like, oh, I know what to do. I'm going to get the answer. And you very well could be right. But uh, what if um, you know how to get the answer, but somebody else is completely lost? Could you kind of convince somebody? Could you teach this? How would you do that? Because that's a big part of mathematics is proving your conclusions. So maybe give that some thought. And if you think you know how you would do that, put that into the comments section uh, as well. Now I'm going to show you the right answer in just one second, and then we're going to walk through the solution to this problem step by step. But before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy the content, please hit that like and subscribe button, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so how long until this parking lot is filled up? Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So any one of these answers would be just fine because the problem uh, didn't specify um, how many minutes, how many hours, how many seconds. So if you came up with any of these answers, you would be correct. So the first is 7,500 seconds or 125 minutes or two hours and five minutes. All right, so how'd you do? Well, if you got any one of these answers, that is fantastic. We must celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a genius, a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic math word problems. Now, they may not be all that impressed, but you know what, tell them anyways, you should feel, uh, feel very good about your accomplishments. And for those of you that are like, I don't even, I couldn't solve this. Maybe I'm just terrible at math. No, you're not terrible at math. What you need to um, know how to do is to really understand and interpret a basic math problem. And that's what we're gonna get into right now because this problem is not that difficult. But what is difficult for a lot of people is I think their strategy to solve a problem. So how do you solve any problem? Well, you have to first think about the problem. Now, that seems kind of obvious. You're like, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man. My time is precious. Don't waste it. I Obviously, we have to think about the problem, but you don't really understand what I'm saying here. I have something called the rule of three. When you are dealing with a math word problem or any problem, you have to force yourself to really think about the problem, and that is, Read it once, you know, read a problem again, really understand the question. And then, you know, when you do that, when you really kind of focus on understanding the problem, then you could start, you know, envisioning ideas to get the solution. Okay. Now, one of the best ways you can get the solution to a math problem is to model it. Okay. And there's all different sorts of creative ways you can um, uh, develop a mathematical model. Oftentimes you can come up with a sketch uh, or you can come up with a, uh, you know, a graph or a table of values. But this is where I think math becomes uh, pretty creative because one person's model can be different than another person's model and they can both be perfectly fine and make sense. So you need to come up with a model of the problem so you can kind of visualize it because if you can see the problem or visualize the problem, you oftentimes can uh, see, uh, you know, the solution much easier. So obviously we have these cars that are going into a 500 space parking lot, one car every 15 seconds, and we want to know how long until this parking lot gets filled up. So what I'm going to do, this is the way my brain works, and of course you could have come up with something different, but I just want to show you the value of coming up with a mathematical model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make my little my, myself here a quick sketch of a uh, parking lot. Now I'm not going to draw out 500 spaces here okay so these are my parking spaces but what i'm going to try to do is see a pattern of what's going on okay now a lot of you are going to say oh well 15 seconds just multiply 15 seconds by 500 you're done no need to belabor uh, the point 
Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're making this problem much harder than it is. Well, that's great that you understand that, but again, what if you had to um, show this to, to someone else? What if you know you were saying just multiply this by this, and someone said, uh, "Yeah, I don't really get that though." Well, how can you prove or how can you kind of validate you know your you know um, your strategy here? Well, one way to do that, and this is kind of an excellent way to do this math is to see patterns, okay, basic patterns. So here's my parking lot, and we know that it had has uh, it has 500 spaces, but we don't need to uh, you know uh, do this you know um, over and over again. And what we're going to be doing is just one iteration of when a car pulls in. So let me kind of show you what I'm doing here. Now again, you could have done something different. No big deal. So here is my first car. So this is the lucky person. They got their parking space right here. This is car number one. Now car number one, uh, it took 15 seconds because once they opened the gates to this parking lot, it was 15 seconds, boom, car number one uh, parked, right? So that's the way I interpret uh, the problem. It's not gonna be at time zero. It's gonna be at time 15 seconds, right? Now, 15 seconds later, because we're getting one car every 15 seconds, car two parks, right? But if you can see here, car two parks 30 seconds into uh, when this, let's suppose there are some gates here uh, to the parking lot when it's op uh, opened up. So 15 seconds after car two parks, car three is going to park, okay? That's another 15 seconds or 45 seconds. So you wanna look for patterns and hopefully you can see what we got here is if we multiply uh, 15 seconds by uh, the cars, how many cars have parked, we get, we get the time, right? So 15 times two is 30, 15 times three is 45. So the third car parked at 45 seconds, and then the fourth car would be another 15 seconds or 15 times four is 60. So what you can do is be like, all right, well the pattern here is if we just take 15 seconds, all right, and we multiply it by how many parking spaces we have. So we have, this is the fourth uh, space, and you can obviously continue on to the fifth space, da, 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 all the way on to the 500 space. So the pattern here is we take 15 seconds, we multiply it by how many spaces we have, we're going to get our time in seconds, okay? And that is how you want to kind of convince somebody. Now, this isn't the only way to do it, but if you can prove your pattern, okay, your logic, uh, then this is really the essence of mathematics. Now, just a quick little uh, a side story here. It's not going to be much of a story. I have a degree in mathematics, but my degree is a BA in mathematics. I also have a master's degree in educational technology, but a BA in mathematics is different than what we call a BS. BS is uh, applied mathematics. That's like generally mathematics for engineering. My degree, BA, is more in like theoretical mathematics. Now, <laughs> to me, it was, uh, uh, you know, I think more challenging than applied mathematics, and that's nothing to take away from applied mathematics. But uh, theoretical mathematics, you deal with proving things, okay? Just because you're like, oh, I know something. Well, you have to prove it, okay? So for example, let's suppose, uh, uh, let me just kind of show you this real quick. Let's take a look at the number of prime numbers, right? So what's prime number here? Well, one is a prime number. What's the next prime number? Well, two would be a prime number, right? Because a prime number is only uh, a number where one and that number goes into it. So three is another prime number, then five, right? Seven. And let's keep going. Not eight's good, nine's good, ten's good. Oh, 11, and then we have what, 13. Now, if you start listing out the prime numbers, and we start from the beginning and we keep going out and out and out, what you're gonna find is that these prime numbers start getting further away from one another, okay? And actually they become very kind of difficult to find. So my question would be this. This is a typical, you know, big picture math kind of a question. How, are there a finite amount of prime numbers in the universe or an infinite amount, okay? So this is the kind of questions that, um, you know, we entertain as mathematicians, right? And if you say, well, there's an infinite amount of primes, well, you certainly can't go find them. How do you prove that? So again, if you are, you know, really want to get into math, okay, or really want to think like a mathematician, you don't have to be a mathematician, but these are, this is the kind of logic that you want to have. And if you can express your, 
solutions, okay, your conclusions in a way where, you know, you're almost like proving your case in, in court, then that is, uh, you know, you're going to really impress any math teacher that looks at your work. Okay, so I didn't want to belabor that point, but in terms of uh, the amount of primes, there's a whole proof to that, and uh, I'm pretty sure there is an infinite amount of primes. Of course, you could double check me uh, on that, but uh, one other quick point too, prime numbers, extremely large prime numbers that are very, very difficult to find. Uh, this is one of the um, key things in what we call cryptology and uh, code breaking and, and you know security and whatnot. So yeah, the math has a role to play pretty much everywhere, every aspect of our modern life. Okay, so let's go ahead and just finish this problem up. And before we do that, I'm going to just quickly ask you to consider subscribing to my channel. This really does help me out. It helps me reach uh, you know other people that are interested in math. And most importantly, those people that are struggling in math. Uh, that's a great strategy, great tragedy, excuse me, uh, to see people give up on math uh, because they haven't had the encouragement or great math instruction uh, or, you know, whatever, okay? Uh, there's all different types of scenarios that can, you know, interrupt someone's education. But, you know, for those of you that want to learn math, okay, please, okay, put in the time and effort and find a teacher that you like and understand. And hopefully that's me, okay? I'm try I try to teach math in a non-textbook way. So I would appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button because it helps me reach other people, maybe like yourself. And if you're gonna do that, might as well hit that notification bell as well. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this problem up. So again, although many of you uh, know how to get the correct answer, it's about justifying our conclusions, right? Okay, so here we have 500 spaces and we already kind of determined, well, let's see here, the pattern is, if we take 15 seconds, multiply it by how many spaces we have, that's how uh, much time uh, it's going to take in seconds. Well, we have 500 spaces, so let's multiply that by 15 seconds, right? 500 times 15, that gives us the time in seconds. So that'd be 7,500 seconds. Now, how do we go from seconds to minutes? Well, we just divide that by 60, right? So there are 60 seconds uh, per one minute. And actually, I don't want to make this uh, video too long, uh, you know, to discuss uh, converting uh, one unit to another. But this is a whole other topic that a lot of uh, students, you know, or a lot of people struggle with. OK, but anyways, I think for most of us, we know, oh, we've got seconds just to divide that by 60. We get minutes. So that's 125 minutes. And then if we think, well, we got 60 minutes is an hour and then we have another 60 minutes and it's another hour. That's 120 minutes. So 120 minutes, we have 125 minutes, so just add another five minutes. So that would be two hours and five minutes. Okay, so hopefully, okay, you got something more out of this video than just the uh, solution, okay? When I do my problems, for those of you that um, have followed me or watched my um, other videos, first of all, thank you so much for uh, taking the time, your precious time, you know, to watch my videos. You know, I work hard at trying to really deliver, you know, make the most of your time, right? I don't want to waste your time. I want to teach you something beyond just solving a basic math problem. You know, I'm trying to teach you kind of the underlying uh, concepts of mathematics so you can kind of take this and, you know, uh, the more math you know, the better off you're going to be. That's my attitude towards things, and hopefully that's yours as well. So even with a basic math problem, okay, you can always learn something that, you know, transcends beyond that, okay? And that's that's kind of my um, thing here. It's like, hey, listen, we can use a basic math problem just to think about some of the key concepts in problem solving. And problem solving in math, you know, if you get good at this, we're talking about analytical thinking, critical thinking. It carries on in other aspects of your life. Now, if you want some additional help with basic math or algebra, if you're just interested in any level of mathematics, I'm going to leave my most common, or my not my most, my most popular main math courses. You'll find those in the description. But if you like these type of problems, I have a ton of them on my YouTube channel. So just kind of scour through uh, my channel and you'll find uh, all types of entertaining math work problems that you can kind of practice your math skills on. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.